Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and today I'll discuss what features unite early fossil apes like Proconsul, Pliopithecus, and Dryopithecus, and other fossil and living apes into a group closely related to our own family, the Hominididae. Apes differ from old world monkeys in one major trait. They lack tails. Unfortunately, tail bones, the caudal vertebrae, don't always preserve in the fossil record. So in recognizing fossil apes, we need to look at features in the skull and teeth that make them unique from old world monkeys, the catarines. And sometimes it's difficult to draw the line using uh, fragmentary fossils between catarines and early apes during the early Miocene. Living apes are classified into two families, the Hydobatidae that includes gibbons, and the Homnididae that includes the great apes, orangutans, chimps, and gorillas, and humans. Together, the two families are placed in a superfamily, or a monophyletic clade, called the Hominoididae. The fossil record of apes extends back into the late Oligocene and early Miocene of Africa, and the Middle East, with fossil apes known from Africa, Europe, and Asia beginning around 25 million years ago. The early Oligocene fossil primate Egyptopithecus from Egypt was a derived arboreal quadrupedal catarine monkey, which featured tall sagittal crests on its skull and a reduced snout. And the orbits or eye sockets were positioned forward to provide stereoscopic vision. One of the traits that we see in the Oligocene and early Miocene is that the face in these catarine primates become broad and tall, and the nares, this is the bony opening for the nostril, is expanded. The skulls begin to look more human as the size of the brain increases as well during this period of time. The Oligocene fossil Sandinius from the late Oligocene of Saudi Arabia resembles the early Oligocene Egyptopithecus. While it could be ancestral to later catarine groups, it could also be ancestral to early apes. The first fossil apes with a better indication of lacking a tail appear in the early Miocene, around 25 million years ago in Africa. One of the best known early Miocene apes is Proconsul, which is placed within its own family, Proconsulidae. We don't have the definitive proof that the fossil lacks at tail, but Proconsul had limb proportions that indicate that it kind of resembled a chimp-like monkey. These early apes featured broad, crushing teeth with a well-developed hypocone on the upper molars and reduced dental formula that included only two premolars and large sexually dimorphic canines. Most fossils of Proconsul come from Kenya, with a couple good skeletons known. During the Miocene, ape-like primates moved out of Africa and expanded their geographic range into Europe and Asia, as the climate during the late Miocene became slightly warmer. These European and Asian fossil apes are placed within three families, the gibbon-like Pliopithecids, like Pliopithecus from the Czech Republic, the Oreopithecids, the, like Oropithecus from Italy, and the Pongidae, like Dryopithecus from southern France and Spain. One of the major features that led to the success of these Miocene apes were their ability to brachiate in the branches of trees. Modern gibbons are well adapted to swinging between trees and climbing on vines, and these Miocene apes took advantage of a greater mobility in the rotation of their shoulders, to uh, allowing a greater deal, deal of mobility um, above their hands for reaching up to branches above them. Now, humans still retain this great mobility and flexibility in the shoulder joint, from our shared ancestry with these Miocene apes. Now in the later Miocene, some of these apes became large, including 
Orangopithecus from Greece and Gigantopithecus from China. The closely related late Miocene Sivriopithecus are believed to be ancestral to orangutans, while Orandopithecus is more closely related to gorillas, and hence these large fossil apes were within or closely related to the hominid family, which includes living great apes and humans, while Proconsul and Dryopithecus and Pliopithecus are more closely related to gibbons and old world monkeys. Most of these larger fossil apes lived between 11 and 9 million years ago, and before the split between uh, great apes and humans. But in the next video lecture, we're going to look at the first fossils that are unique to our own branch in the Tree of Life, with a fossil record that begins around 7 million years ago, but with new discoveries around 4.4 million years ago, giving us a glimpse into our own deep evolution. In summary, be sure to list features such as the absence of the tail, broad crushing teeth with well-developed hypocones, large canines, larger brains and brain cases in the skull, and a greater mobility in the shoulder joint that all unite fossil, early fossil uh, apes like Proconsul and other fossil and living apes into a group closely related to the family Hominididae within a Miocene diversity of the clade Hominoididae. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.